this court has reversed custody in cases where there's been severe parental alienation going on. And I'll do it again. This is in the uh, District Court of Butler County, Kansas, case entitled In the Matter of the Marriage of Caitlin C. Witten and Brandon Witten, case number 2022 DM340. Caitlin Winton appears apparently representing herself. I trust that's Mr. Winton in the office uh, of the lawyer. Uh, counsel, would you make appearances for the record, please? Yes, Your Honor. May I please support Desiree Smith appearing on behalf of the respondent, Brandon Winton, who also appears in person? Thank you. This matter comes before the court at this time for hearing on Caitlin's motion. Um, Caitlin, I. I your motion is entitled Motion 2-4. Uh, and then there's just kind of a long paragraph of thoughts that you put together without. Uh, I, I just want some clarity as what you are seeking this morning through your motion. Yeah, sorry. I tried to get the sentence and filling that out. I couldn't. Um, mainly just... Um, 50 50 followed we're just we're not co-parenting like we should be we're not co-parenting in the best interest of the children um he's using the children to contact me to ask for things he wants and it's it's not okay there's conversations between him and i that should be happening between him and i and when i say no or when he says no it should be dropped and it should never have been asked by the children and um to the point of i've had to silence my phone um, cause they just keep calling and calling and asking, um, for the, like for things that he would like, or they would like to happen during my time. Um, so I would like 50, 50 followed as well as just the communication to stay between him and I and not the children. Um, I mean, it's just, it's best for the kids not to get involved in that. Um, he's not following first rights completely. So I would like to enforce that. There's a lot of alienation going on and a lot of mental abuse by Brandon, and I needed to stop. I have a family. I have another child. Um, we have my kids' location at all times. Um, so when the kids are with me, it's starting to feel like he's stalking me. It's it's making me and James fear for the safety of our other child that James and I have together. Um, and it's, Let me stop you there. How is he tracking the kids' location? On their phone. They're eight and nine years old, and they each have a cell phone? Yeah. Okay. I know. I know. Um, and the cell, phones, the cell phone for the nine-year-old did happen without my knowledge, and so then the eight-year-old got a cell phone. Um, there, and then I would like the no-contact order on James lifted. We've been no-contact with him and the kids for six months. He's been through therapy because of what Brandon's caused um, and the mental abuse he's caused on both me and James. And both of us have had to go through therapy and I've done everything Brandon's asked. I've been extensively in family therapy. Um, he actually upset the family therapist the other day by his phone call to her. Um, so I have done everything he has asked and he is not, not listening on anything. I've changed my schedule for 50-50 custody. And now because of my change schedule, he says I have to ask him every Friday if he can take the kids. And if I can't, I have to hire somebody to pick the kids up from school and keep them until I get off at 7. I just need a definite answer. Does he want to keep them every Friday or do I need to hire somebody? Because I can't just, I can't say, hey, I'll hire you, but only if my ex-husband can't pick the kids up. Um, to pick my kids up and I'll pay you to pick them up on Friday and watch them till I get off work on set at seven on Friday. Um, but I'm off Monday and Tuesday and that's when I'm supposed to have the kids and I don't have the kids currently on Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, and then there's a lot of just the alienation. Um, the kids are calling his girlfriend mom and I've asked it for it to stop. I have to talk to the family therapist about this. The family therapist and I have both talked to the kids about it. We asked for it to stop, and they just they refused to let it stop. Um, and the current girlfriend has also stated to Paisley, um, when Paisley asked about her mom, she said, 
me and my mom don't talk because of the abuse she caused me when I was younger. And that should never have been a conversation between my nine-year-old and a 25-year-old. Um, and my nine-year-old does know that her mom is in her own as devil. So there's just a lot of alienation going on with the kids. And if I can get that to stop or get a no contact order on her for the time being, that would be fabulous. Because I am trying to repair my relationship with the kids that I took care of 24-7 before this divorce happened. Okay. You do note uh, my docket sheet indicates that on January 31 of 2023, I made a notation, no contact between the Winton children and the boyfriend listed at that time as father of infant at the current time. Ms. Smith, do you know why that was done in the first place? Yes, Your Honor. Um, at the time of that hearing, Ms. Winton was in the hospital having another minor child that belongs to her and um, James Hall. And my client had concerns that I believe the court shared based on text messages we provided from Ms. Wynn, where she was claiming that Mr. Hall was abusive and that he had hurt her and tried to hurt her while she was pregnant with the baby, um, that she was having very serious mental health issues herself because of his abuse. And we had shared those messages with the court Furthermore, there have been several incidents with the children where he had yelled at them, smashed their things, those sorts of things. So at that time, the court ordered that he not have contact with the minor children since he is not their father. And then that was confirmed again um, in December of 2023 in the journal entry that was filed. The parties adopted a domestic conciliation recommendation at a final hearing, and the only issue was whether or not the children had contact with Mr. Hall. And the court allowed counsel to go into a breakout room um, and kind of negotiate that. And then came back and they put on the record in December of 2023 that the children would not have contact with Mr. Hall because that same day, Ms. Witten had filed a PFA against him, alleging that he was abusive to her and the children. And that was in December of 2023. I believe Ms. Witten has now dismissed that PFA but her allegations of abuse against him have been ongoing since January of 2023. And that is why there's no contact provision for a period of 12 months in the journal entry beginning December of 2023. All right, let's, let's stick with that issue for now. Um, Caitlin, I'll, I'll ask you, I mean, if there's been some ongoing concern over domestic violence to the point where you filed for a civil restraining order, wouldn't that necessarily give this court pause about relaxing any restrictions between him and these children? I was called that morning of the, before the court by Brandon stating, do I need to handle this or are you going to handle this? Um, stating that he was going to take the kids from me if I did not file the PFA. I thought that getting the PFA on the kids with JP would stop James and um, Brandon from talking because at the time they were also, they were talking the whole time while I was filing the PFA trying to plan on how to take the infant away from me. And I I didn't want that to happen, so I thought getting the PFA would stop them from talking. Um because we were going through something because of a text message Brandon had sent. Um the thing they he's never abused the children and nothing has happened with the kids around. Um the only thing that happened with the kids around was he took he and in the infant away from the situation that was escalating between the kids when they were uh, not listening to me and it was getting pretty intense. And so he took the kids away from there. He took the baby away from that situation. Um, but there's never been anything that has happened um, the around the kids. The smashing of the iPod, it happened over a year ago, but the reason it was is because my son was throwing rocks at James's truck. Um, over and over and over again, and he reacted by, you know, throwing an iPod. Um, since then, I've replaced it with a phone. <clears throat> so, I haven't replaced it, but there's been no domestic violence. Um, when he went to jail, it was not for domestic violence. It was for something that was a misunderstanding between him and I, and it completely got dropped. 
But the PFA, honestly, I thought it would stop James and Brandon from talking. And that was my goal because him and Brandon and their friend Stephanie were trying to ploy against me. Stephanie even got a false uh, protection from stalking on me. And I don't even know the woman. I don't know who she is. And so those three have, when James and I were not together, have tried to ploy numerous times taking the infants away from me. All right. What is your relationship currently with this James Hall? Uh, we're engaged. Do you live together? We can't because of the no contact order, but that is our goal. Okay. We All need right. to for the for the infant. And I'm not asking for him to be around all the time. I'm just asking for, you know, he, he's busy on the weekends. He works during the week, works on the weekends. He's not around a lot anyways. So it's not like it will be an all-the-time thing, just a more relaxed situation so that my son can also see his dad and I don't have to pick between families because I didn't have to miss my son's first birthday due to having to pick either his dad's there or my kids are there. Who do I make miss the first birthday? Is his father or my kids? All right, on that issue, I'll go ahead and make a ruling at this time. Uh, Caitlin, I can certainly understand why there might be some reservations about this kind of restriction remaining in effect. I, I can't imagine all the logistical problems that it causes. I, I have no doubt that they're significant as you're trying to blend families and make things work. However, this was an agreement you made. And I'm not inclined to relieve you from your agreement. It's one thing if the court ordered it. Uh, I feel like that the court didn't have the jurisdiction to change its order, but where you made a specific agreement that he wouldn't have contact with the Winton children for 12 months, uh, I'm inclined to enforce your agreement that you made. Um, to a certain degree, I think you feel like you made that agreement under some duress. But nevertheless, um, the journal entry clearly reflects, uh, reflects that this was an agreement that you made and uh, I'm not inclined to grant relief on it at this time. It will expire at, uh, for the end of the year, and then there will not be that restriction in place anymore. Unless there's good reason for an extension of it. But um, and specifically, the clause is paragraph 20. The parties agree that the children will not have any contact with J.B. Hall for a period of 12 months following the signing of this journal entry and decree of divorce, which was done in December of 23. So that, that restriction remains in effect. Okay. Um, you had mentioned, Caitlin, that <clears throat> you're not doing the 50-50. Is that right? Yeah, he's not following it. What do you mean he's not following it? Don't you have a schedule? I don't get the kids Monday morning. I'm supposed to have them every Monday, Tuesday. It was supposed to be up to the discretion of the family therapist. I've asked the family therapist. She says we're ready. But he refuses to have a meeting with both these family therapists. And I, I'm trying to go care for the best of the kids, and it's not working. Oh, I see. Your Honor, may I respond just to the family therapist and 50-50 issue? Uh, you may do so. Your Honor, my client is only not doing 50-50 because I've been injured this whole time. I have not received a report from the family therapist. I've not received any recommendation. I've not, my client has either. He's talked to her twice, maybe three times on the phone. Um, over this period of time, but has never received a phone call from her recommending 50-50. So that recommendation is solely based on Ms. Winton's report to the court today that the family therapist is saying that they're ready. But 
I have never been provided any sort of report recommendation, neither has my client. So the parenting time currently in effect is every other weekend with the possibility of moving to 50-50 upon a recommendation from the family therapist. To my knowledge, the court and myself has received this recommendation from the family therapist, and she certainly has not made that recommendation to my client. All right, uh, Caitlin addressed family therapy. How often are you doing these sessions? Every two weeks when I have the kids on Saturdays, because he won't he won't give me the kids any extra, but he asks for extra time during my time. So we do it every two weeks on during my time on a Saturday. We've maybe missed like one or two, but that was due to like scheduling conflict. Like one time she had a court ordered, like she had to talk to an attorney, so she canceled. And then one time I canceled due to a sick baby. Um, Who's the family therapist? Uh, Connie Mays is her name. Okay. Is there a reason why you haven't provided any documentation of the recommendation to the other side? No, I've asked for it numerous times. I'm just, I'm tired of him having control over this. Like, there just should not be the control he has over this entire situation. Um, he keeps threatening me that I'll, I'll get the documentation, but he keeps threatening me that I'm not mentally stable and he's going to take the kids away from me until I get a mental evaluation. Um, I, I'm just, I'm tired. I'm tired of that. And so I'll get the documentation he needs, but I, I don't want the to have control over it anymore. I don't want the mental abuse to keep happening. Okay. Well, okay, I'm just saying what you agreed to is, is that a family therapist would make a recommendation to expand your parenting time. And until that recommendation is documented, I, I don't know how you feel like that this court should change the agreement that you made. And if you have, you could ask the family therapist for a report. Is there any way I can talk about these agreements? Because the agreements were made under complete stress during a time where I was handling another issue with the infant son. And Brandon calling me, is there any way we can go back and re-agree? <laughs> well, doesn't sound like he's real inclined to do that. Are you telling me you don't think you can get the recommendation from the family therapist? No, I absolutely can. It's just the agreements were made, uh, like especially like the no contact order. That agreement was made due to a phone call I received right before court and the stress I was like going through during that time, and and then the agreement of the family therapist. Like it was all made during a time where I was I was just so stressed because of the situation I was handling outside, plus he's making phone calls threatening, if you don't make, do this, then I'm going to take the kids away from you and I'm going to handle it myself. Like, I would like to go back, you know, go to domestic insulation or some sort of thing, go back to the drawing board of agreement and getting everybody in therapy. I mean, including the kids, he's still hasn't gotten them in individual therapy, which he was supposed to do due to domestic conciliation. Um, and the family therapist strongly recommends, strongly recommends the kids be in individual therapy. All right. That's already part of the order though. Yeah, but it hasn't happened. Hmm. All right, uh, Ms. Smith, can you address that? How come paragraph four is not being followed? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, both parties have an obligation under paragraph four to each contact the therapist and report back to one another. My client would like to use Amy Meek as a therapist, but Ms. Wenton had a problem with Amy Meek because of somebody she's treated in the past was our understanding. And so my client was supposed to get some confirmation that somebody else in Ms. Meek's office had not treated those two children. Um, and then Ms. Winton was also supposed to contact her preferred individual therapist. And I don't believe that she ever contacted the therapist that she 
prefer either. So my client is stuck. He every time he chooses a therapist, he gets the children enrolled in therapy, but then Ms. Wetton objects to that therapy, and that's why the kids are not in. He's been trying to get the kids into individual therapy with Amy Meek's office since this case started two years ago. Um, but every time he makes any progress, and there's a wait list. I mean, it takes two to three months to get in anywhere right now. Um, every time he makes progress, then he gets shut down because they have joint legal custody and they have to agree on the therapist. So if Ms. Wayne will agree that he can, you know, choose a therapist under that name and number and she'll agree to it, the kids could get an individual therapy. But so far, he's never received agreement from anybody that he's proposed. And they have joint legal custody, so all the minor children would be approving sent in individual therapy. And so it's a mutual issue that they're having when consent to anybody that my client is able to get them in with. Um, hey, Lynn, did you address I, that, please? You're, you're not agreeing to the therapist? That's not true. I do have documentation in the court order app of Brandon and me because we were getting along after the court order, you know, after the, you know, we finally divorced when he was not with his girlfriend. Um, we were getting along and we discussed it and I said, okay, I'm fine with Amy Meeks as long as there's like strict following of HIPAA, like do not discuss my children with any other therapist and this therapist particular cannot uh, handle the ex-girlfriend's kids, which is the issue. Um, and I agreed to it and I had contacted him through the family app and he said, yes, I have paperwork. I need to get it to you because you need to sign it. And I said, okay, we'll bring it the next time we meet or next time you see me, bring that paperwork so I can sign it. I have yet to receive the paperwork. So I have agreed on Amy Meeks in the court ordered app, and I have told him to get me the paperwork to sign, and he has refused and failed to do so. All right. Well, it appears that there's an agreement to, to this Amy Meek being the children's therapist. So let's follow up on that and let's get it started. Simple enough. All right, but it's incumbent upon you, Caitlin, to get the recommendation from the family therapist. Your three months has come and gone. So at this point, you're eligible to have these uh, parental rights expanded or this time with the children expanded just with a uh, family therapist recommendation that it's time. So you'll contact her and make that happen, I presume? Three months is only because I had to change my schedule. So I'll contact her and I'll get the recommendation. But that, I mean, my schedule has been changed since March. So I, I just don't understand why he gets the control to say that I only get my kids due to family therapy when I'm taking care of them their whole life. Well, because you, well, for one reason, because you agreed to it. But um, all right. Well, again, uh, the court will direct the uh, move-in, in this case, Caitlin, to contact the family therapist and to get something in writing, at least an email or something with documentable communication, that it's time uh, for expansion of mom's parenting time. Then there's a schedule, which is already set forth, which would be a shared parenting time schedule that would then be implemented, right? Caitlin? Yeah. Okay. But I, I agree with Ms. Smith that I think they're entitled to have documentation from the family therapist. And it's incumbent upon you to make sure that that is accomplished. I'm not saying that they don't. I just, I, nobody told me the expectation of what they needed and I'll get it done. Okay. <laughs> that helps address that issue. Ms. Smith, why is it necessary for your client to track the location of these kids when they're with their mom? Your Honor, my client is not specifically tracking the location of the kids when they're with their mom specifically. The children are 9 and 10. They have cell phones, and part of the agreement that he had you know, set up with those phones was that he would have their location at all times if they're going to have them. So 
when these phones were received, the children shared their location with their father. It was not only on weekends with your mom or anything like that. It was not an attempt to track her. It was just the kids had phones and part of the safety concern with children having phones was that they would share their location. It's my understanding that they could share their location with Miss Winton if they want, like if she wanted them to. It was not a, we're gonna track them on her time. It was simply a safety concern of children having phones. My client reports that he's once opened their location when they were with their mom, and that was when he got a concern from one of his kids called that she was drinking and driving. At that point, he opened their location one time, which was after the Super Bowl. He's, other than that one time, he's never even opened their location when they're with their mom. It was simply a safety concern with the children who are nine and 10 are going to have phones that they share their location with him. Um, so he's not using it to track her. He's never showed up where she is. Even the one night he had concerned, he didn't go to where she was. He's never stalked her. He's never shown up at a house where she's at. He just has the kids' locations as a safety concern on the phone um, and has no intention of using it to track the kids on this one this time. Or perhaps being a bit old fashioned doesn't understand why kids that are eight, nine, and 10 even need their own phone. What, what for? What is the real purpose of these kids needing a phone? They don't, is the reality. And in some similar situations, the court has simply just ordered that the phones be taken away from the kids and be restored to just being normal kids without having to be part of a technological world. Nevertheless, these phones uh, are in place. Apparently, Dad's paying for them. Is that right? That's correct. They share the cost, I believe, Your Honor. I think they each pay for one phone. My client, I just spoke with him. He'll agree to turn off the location on this Wednesday weekends. It's not even a big deal to him. Like I said, he'll turn off the kids' locations on their phone when he's there with their mom. Would that satisfy you, Caitlin? It will, um, but I do want to address the situation where they said I had the kids on the Super Bowl. It was not the Super Bowl, it was the MMA fight. Okay, I'm barely hearing you. I think it's because you're outside. Um, I did not have the kids on the Super Bowl. It was the MMA fight. Same one location, though, okay? I'm trying. I don't want to get motion sickness watching you move around. Um, It was the MMA fight, and it was not – Um, I did not drink and drive. I brought my own soda, specifically okay. because I knew people were going to be drinking. Um, we were there late. Yeah. But the kids were having fun. And I even said something about leaving and both the kids said, no, 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 we don't want to leave yet. And so okay. we stay okay. longer, but I mean, I, I do. And I do also have a text message from Paisley's phone from Brandon and Paisley saying, why is your location off? And she said, I don't know. Maybe mom turned it off, which I didn't. And, um, he stated with, I would have to go back and look at this text message, but they're blaming me for turning off the location, which I didn't. But there is some something not not adding up here. He does want the location when they're with me because he was upset that the location was off while they were at my house. And it is becoming a stalking situation. I, I don't well, agree with the kids. Okay. Having As a general principle, a parent has a right to know where their children are. But There's nothing wrong with that in principle, all right? But when they're with it, the other parent, I don't see the necessity for tracking, location tracking. I don't. Unless for some reason to believe that, that the other parent has taken them into an unsafe environment or trying to leave the state with them unauthorized or something like that, absent those types of unusual concerns, um, I think his agreement uh, or the allowance of the tracking uh, not take place while they're with you, I think addresses the problem. The rest of the time, if he's going to equip them with a phone, then he has a right to use tracking. I, I don't see anything wrong with that as a matter of principle. Can I also have their location? Sure. You have just as much right to know where your children are. But again, when they're with their dad, why would you need to do that? I don't, just when they're with me, and I plan on getting this 50-50 set in stone and going, so they'll be with me 50% of the time. Okay. Well, I think we've reached an accord in that regard. Um, 
calling uh, girlfriends or boyfriends, dad or mom. Generally speaking, most therapists recommend doing what the children think is comfortable. Uh, as long as it's not being coached by a parent. Parents should not be coaching their kids as to calling a boyfriend or girlfriend, mom or dad. Those are really terms that are should be reserved for the natural parents and the natural parents only. However, it's not unusual for stepmothers to be called mom or stepdads to be called dad. And if the kids are comfortable with it, the court generally doesn't interfere with what makes them comfortable. But again, I think it's important for the parents not to encourage it um, and not for these children to get confused as to who their real mom or dad is and who a step figure is in their lives. So, Caitlin, is there anything else you want to say about that? I just think um, from the issues I've had with the current girlfriend, there's been a lot of alienation and I just, and they're not even married. So I don't think, I don't think it should be okay. I am their mom and we don't have a great relationship now because of this divorce and I'm trying to rebuild my relationship and they're posting on their Snapchat and everything tattooed with mom or Brandon's drawing like stuff on their, like matching with mama, but you know, with her. And I, I think that, they should. I, I just, I don't agree with it. And neither did my family therapist. She did not think that it was an okay thing. She's had an order come across her desk recently where the court ordered that the kids don't call anybody but the natural mom and dad, mom and dad, or any hey, sort of related. Is that, is that part of your agreements in this case? I mean, you guys reached a full parenting plan. Did you guys agree to that? We had a very open-ended, unfortunately, open-ended uh, parenting plan, which is why I'm here. Nothing set, like nothing set in stone, like meeting places and stuff like that. And that's why I'm trying to, I'm trying to get it set in stone because I don't want contact with Brandon if I can at all possible. I, I, he's very mentally abusive when it comes to talking, so I don't want contact. So that was not stated in the parenting plan. Uh, does the dad take a position on this dad and mom name calling issue? Your Honor, his only position is that the kids began doing it themselves. He's had conversations with the kids when they first started that they're in no way required to call his girlfriend, mom, um, anything like that. He said, you do what you're comfortable with. Um, there's two other kids in his house that do call her mom because they're her kids. And so sometimes it's just... A comfortability thing when the other two kids are calling it comes out of their mouth that she's not but he does not have a position he's not coaching the kids to do it he's told them to do what they're comfortable with it's come up in family therapy and i know that the family therapist is trying to work through with the kids why they feel that way um and so i think that's the best place to address it he's certainly not going to be upset you know, if the kids' future, you know, if Miss Wenton were to be in a relationship and in the future called Ben Dad or something, that's not something that, you know, he was going to be upset about. I reviewed the parenting plan. It's not in there. Um, so if that's his understanding of the agreement is that the kids get to make kind of that choice based on what they're comfortable with in the situation. Well, because we're both in a family and individual therapy situation, I do think that this is an issue to be discussed with therapists. Uh, I, I want to make sure that the kids understand the roles of all of the adults that are that are in their life. I'm not going to make a specific order at this time requiring these kids to call just dad, dad, and just mom, mom. But uh, I do think this is an issue to be discussed in therapy. And I will want that. I'll want that in a court order, which stems from today, which I'm going to task Ms. Smith into doing. Further, I do, I do want to give this admonition. Uh, this court over the years has unfortunately seen true cases of parental alienation, both by the, the ex-spouse and by the significant others in their households. This court has reversed custody in cases where there's been severe parental alienation going on. And I'll do it again. That is unacceptable 
I think that that is very harmful to the children. And each parent should take steps to stop it wherever it happens. Number one, they shouldn't engage in it themselves. But if anybody else in their household is engaging in any type of put downs of the other parent or parental alienation, the court considers this to be very, very serious breaches of the rules of joint legal custody. And if the parents won't take care of it, the court will. So it, it can't go on. If anything, uh, say a stepmother should do nothing but encourage the children's relationship with their natural mom. Privately, she can have her own thoughts. She can have her own conversation with her husband. But as far as the kids are concerned, it should be nothing but an encouraging environment. It's the only way things work. But with that admonition made, I trust that uh, Brandon, in this case, will make sure none of it goes on by him or anyone else in his household concerning their natural mom. All right, Caitlin, was there anything else in the motion that you had filed that we haven't addressed? Yeah, I want meeting place is set in stone. I, I just kind of want to go back to the drawing board of re-agreeing because I want meeting places set in stone. He's had me come to his work, which means I have to get up my infant at 6 a.m. on days that he needed my help because there was one time where he needed me to take the kids. I had to wake up my son and drive all the way to his work to pick up the kids. I want a meeting place set in stone. Like, I, I'm not happy with what we agreed. We left it way too open-ended. And it's now become a problem in my life. Like nothing is nothing is working out right now. And I don't get to have a family. I don't get to have a life because of him and his control and the open ending agreement. Like why does my son have to miss out on time with his dad because of Brandon and not liking J James? As well as why does my son have to miss out on time with his siblings? You know, if because of all this, it's just I want to go back to the drawing board of agreement. I I wasn't in a good place for an agreement at the time, and I couldn't reschedule because I needed divorce from this man. Okay, you understand? You do have an exchange clause in effect. Something about gas stations in each other's town. That's yes, supposed sure. to be it. Oh, sorry. Which the court sees on its face to be somewhat unworkable. What gas station? What town? Why Why don't you just pick up each other's residences? Is there a reason why that's not done? He won't do it because it's not a public place. Why I, does I'll it have do to it, be a public place? I don't know. Your Honor, it the word gas station was used, but the parties routinely meet at the same Casey's. So it was probably an error in drafting, but the parties have a Casey's gas station that they meet at in both towns that is routinely used. Um, and if we need to in the order state Casey's and give the address, that's fine. But that's routinely where the parties meet. Um, they yeah, agree but not on always that. because of the open-ended nature of this. The only time that it doesn't happen is when the first right of refusal is in play because then that changes where the parents are for their day. So the one time that she's picked up at dad's work was because dad offered the right of first refusal to her and she took him up on it. And so the kids were there to be picked up instead because he got called into work, works for the fire department. So other than emergency situations or when the right of first refusal is used, the parties routinely meet at the Casey's um, in their hometown, or they exchange at school. I mean, a lot of the times, if it's possible, the parties exchange at school drop-off. This is really a pretty one-off situation where they um, have to exchange, I think on Sunday nights, primarily, is when they exchange at a gas station. Um, and then if Miss Winton is not available to pick up from school on Fridays, they exchange at the gas station. The reason that they agreed on public place was because Miss Winton frequently makes allegations of Mr. Winton being abusive. Um, and so because of that, there needed to be um, potential video audio recordings where they are because of her frequent allegations that he abuses her at drop offs and those sorts of things. All right. Well, what are the two towns that are involved here? Rose Hill and Douglas. Excuse me? Rose Hill and Douglas currently because okay. 
but I, I'm in an apartment, so that could change if my lease is up and I don't own a house, so I have to live where I can rent. All right. Well, I think there needs to be consistency in the meeting place. And if there's any issues about someone accusing someone else of anything, I guess I see the need for a public place where there's other people around, well lit, and it's open. Um, but there are times that the kids would be picked up from school, Caitlin? No, not well, not really anymore until we start back up 50-50. I was picking them up on Fridays because I was off Mondays and Fridays, and I would start my time Friday like after they got off out of school. Currently, I've changed my schedule to where I have Monday, Tuesday off so that I could fit for the 50-50 um, schedule. I don't get off till 7 now on Fridays. Um, so if perhaps he happens to be available to take them Friday, but I um, also need that address because he keeps telling me I have to ask him on Wednesday if he can take them on Friday after school and keep them till I get off. But if I, if he can't, I either have to call into work or I have to hire somebody. It's just, it's becoming an issue of like, nobody wants just a every now and then job. So I need to know if he's going to keep them on Friday at, every Friday, or if I need to hire somebody for every Friday. Um, but no, that I don't. Pick what's them the up. answer to that question? I don't pick them up from school right now until we. Oh, I'm sorry. Where you asked, you said that he needs to let you know the answer. What is the answer? Your Honor, my and client is fine with putting in an order that he picks them up on Fridays. He was currently following the first right refusal language because he's trying to comply as strictly with the order as possible, and he didn't want to take her time without that being in writing. Um, again, because of allegations that have been made. If we do an order today that he picks them up from school on Friday and they exchange after she gets off, he's fine with that. But until that was in place, he was trying to follow the right of first refusal language. I think, all right. I think that tells Caitlin what she needs to know, right? Yes. Okay. So perhaps the Casey's um, uh, general stores or whatever needs to be identified uh, in the order as far as an exchange location. And if Caitlin moves to a new city, perhaps they have a Casey's as well for the exchanges. I would assume Casey's are very popular, but who knows? Cross that bridge when we get to it. All right. Anything else, Caitlin? Is there a request I can make of going back to the drawing board of re-agreeing on everything? We're, we're not. We're not going to address that today. First of all, this court would be interested in what the the family therapist recommendation is, which was the threshold uh, requirement that has to be met. So I think that needs to be addressed first. And that's consistent with the agreement you made, Caitlin. So okay, I'll get that. Yeah, I can get that today. <laughs> There is a shared custody schedule already in place, which I think would be consistent with the best interest of the kids. There's just a prerequisite that needs to be met before that happens. Actually, two prerequisites. One's already happened. Three months has passed. Uh, the second is a recommendation from the family therapist that you're ready for that, and that the kids are ready for that. Mm. So... At this time, your request to go back to square one is, is denied. Okay. All right. I think that that's addressed the concerns that were addressed in, in the motion. Ms. Smith, I know you've been present for this, been taking, I think, some copious notes regarding uh, the court's various rulings and expressions. If you put that in an appropriate order, stemming from today. Yes, I can do that, Get that over to Caitlin. Caitlin, um, if it matches what the court ordered today, even if you don't agree with all of it, you need to approve that so we can get to the court as soon as possible. Okay. okay. And I and I trust Ms. Smith that you have the contact information on Caitlin to be able to get it to her. Yes, I do, John. Okay. 
I noticed when you filed your motion, Caitlin, you didn't put any contact information with it. But you're not supposed I to have, do. I have tried to get help on filing that motion and I got that's literally well, 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 just listen, started, then you so. need to have your address, telephone number, email address. Court and the other side needs to be able to communicate with you and the, the, the court's rules require that that information be on your pleading so that everyone knows how you can be contacted. OK. All right. I encourage the parties to continue to work together for the best interest of your kids. Again, thank you for the taking care of the drafting assignment, Ms. Smith. Greatly appreciate it. I'll look forward to getting that in my queue very soon. Thank you. Nothing further. The Winton matter at this time will be in recess and this meeting may be ended for all.